So you, when we met earlier this year, or maybe it was last year, it was the, towards the end of last year, we met in Lisbon. We spoke about sleepless nights around Luna potentially depegging and, and the yeah. death spiral. How comfortable are you feeling now with the BTC reserve? And we don't yet know what percentage of the burn is going to start going more towards BTC. But how much more comfortable are you now? How much, how much better are you sleeping at night knowing that this is in place? <laughs> I'm definitely much more comfortable than I was when it was a pure uh, algorithmic stablecoin. Because obviously algorithmic stablecoins, um, you know, they, they, it, Luna is the only one that really succeeded. And, and the model has this like reflexivity that's really hard to reason about. So I'm much more comfortable than I, than I, than I was then. Um, I would still say like right now, uh, LFG has about three billion in reserves, one and a half billion Bitcoin and, and about one and a half billion in, in stables. Um, and, and like UST outstanding supply is 16 billion, right? About, about like or let's say 12 or so because four is held by the ecosystem reserve. So it's still not um, not a super high sort of reserve ratio, but I do think psychologically it's going to have a, a, a massive effect. Um, and also like Luna has been working fine without that, right? So this is going to have a huge psychological effect. And I also think um, based on simulations we've been doing and, and stuff we've been looking at, there's a real good path to, to, to getting that much higher. So I'm feeling pretty positive about the about the system right now. Okay, amazing. So you're not having you're not having but, as many as many yeah. sleepless. But there's the, the risk still there, right? That that that's the risk of this of this thing. I mean, I think there's two main risks with Luna. I would say the first one is the is the DPEG risk, right? This this bank run risk where everyone like just just fuds this and and tries to redeem their UST at once. Luna mints and it goes on that sort of a uh, reflexive loop. And then the second one is just it's uh, the BTC reserve. While it added uh, resilience to the system, it did at least temporarily make it less decentralized, right? Where we, this this reserve is being held by the foundation, which which I'm a I'm a director of. Um, but I think like we we're, we have a really good plan to get that to, to to a state where it won't be the case, where it'll be a fully on chain automated reserve facility, um, and then we'll you know get get back to a point where it's where it's more decentralized again. Yeah, those spoken about that in terms of the infrastructure not being ready now to make it fully decentralized. You have to build the, the infrastructure. You have to build the, the capabilities to be able to trade it. Yeah. Because what are but you going to I mean, use, right? Like it's WBTC is like a is like a BitGo multisig. It's not really ideal, and yeah. it's it's not. You can't like uh, on one hand sort of criticize Maker for using, you know, uh, USDC, and then and then have like WBTC, which is a which is a, a BitGo multisig, right? We have to do better than that, and then Thorchain and stuff. Uh, an Axelar and all these solutions are really promising, but they just haven't been battle tested with like, you know, hundreds of millions, let alone billions of dollars. So it just doesn't make sense to, to, to just ape into those without, without doing your research and without. So yeah, it, it's a case of waiting for the infrastructure to be ready. If you like this clip, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification. You'll be notified every time that we drop content on this channel. This channel is dedicated to people just like you who are time-starved and need a microdose of crypto content.